if you are a parent and you also make movies, everybody knows movies are like babies, you know? And so if you have two human babies, you know, it's harder for you to turn out film babies. And I sort of like am okay with that. You know, I think that it's a really honorable job to be a, a parent, I really do. Like, no big deal. We're just creating the next generation of humans. You know, it's like, that's a really beautiful thing. And, and it also, it a thousand percent feeds into your experience as a writer, your experience as a director. You know, it's like your, your understanding of the human condition, period. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Lake Bell is an actor. She's the co-producer, co-creator, and director of the new TV comedy, Bless This Mess. On the day it premiered on ABC, she sat down with me in New York City to talk about the work. When you approach a script that's a comedy, it just feels like it's different than you would for a drama or something that's not comedy because there's this overlaying thing. The jokes have to land. Yeah, so the way you um, sort of approach as an actor or as an actor comedian, you know, a, a script that is comedic, it's, there's like a musicality there. So you're just looking, you know, when you're reading the script, you're thinking rhythmically, you know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna hit that joke there. I see what the joke is. Oh wait, what's the sense of this joke? I'm not quite get. Oh, I see. Okay, there was a setup there, and now it's a payoff. You know, it's like right. so. It's a more rhythmic. But um, my question is: to Is it. that the first thing that you go in at the musicality, rather than what's my character here? Yeah, it's it, for me. It's when I'm reading a comedy. It's like I. Like any script, I'm going to see if I'm pulled into it first, just even if I can connect with it, just the story, right? So out of the gate, if I read it and the way that it's structured or because, you know, I'm a writer as well. So it's like I'm going to know pretty quickly whether or not this is like within my which if this interests me or not, you know, or if it, it feels like something I can relate to, even just as a as a as a writer. Mm. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I tend to read things um somewhat critically i guess you know it's like i i can lose i can lose it on page one right. i'm like nope you know it's like i have children there's only so many hours in the day yeah. you know i don't my patience and interest in just anything has waned and it's largely to do with um the fact that i do generate my own content and um i likely won't do someone else's work unless I really love it mm. because I'm just so excited to write things for myself and and I'm not particularly fast at it so it means it's kind of a slow burn you know um, and it means I have to wait a little longer or something comes around and I'm like wow you know and I'm sort of excited about it and wooed and and I'm like oh that's something that I wouldn't know how to write for myself necessarily mm. and that's a world that I don't really um, I don't play in as a writer so then that's usually enticing when it's a different genre than I'm used to kind of mm -hmm. taking on as a writer then then I'm like wow thanks for inviting me to this space as an actor you know when you are directing writing and acting like this pilot is there a worry that there's no one around that you can trust so this you know making a network pilot is vastly different obviously than writing, directing, and starring, producing a, a, a tiny indie movie, you know? When you're, as you all know, um, if you're writing, directing, and starring, or whatever, making a small independent feature, you know, over the course of 20 days, you know, and you're just like hustling your ass off, it's mm -hmm. like that, that's a, a, it's a similar muscle group, but it's not like, um, it's not the same thing. You're the only person that anyone's gonna ask any, um, you know, if there's any questions about, you know, uh, from wardrobe to, you know, lighting or, you know, camera decisions, like any, any in any department, you know, they're going to come to the filmmaker to be like, what do, what do you want to do here? And it's very easy. One stop shopping. You're the only person you have to ask. Yeah. Even your producers are like, you got this, you know, in independent filmmaking. Yeah. That said, <laughs> um, in it's a totally different experience making a network pilot where a, I co-wrote and 
co-create this with Liz Merriweather. And so I have this creative comrade built in to kind of, um, you know, it's like a, mm -hmm. a pal right there who I trust, whose sensibility I understand and who we, we are aligned. We're like a united front. That's great. And also I have to listen to the massive corporations that I work for. It's like I'm a, yeah. I'm a, an entity for hire ostensibly, you know, it's like I, that's the, that's a huge difference. So you feel not alone. You feel if anything, a little crowded, which is not necessarily bad, but it does take an adjustment, mm -hmm. you know? Cause I, it's like, I'm early enough and young enough in the process, like of this relationship, you know, that I'm like, yeah, this is still really cool. I did six episodes, you know? And my, the pilot experience was, was a positive one, you know, it was like, oh, this is a, this is, this is, it's groovy to be able to have like a Jimmy Jib anytime you want, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, or you're like, wow, I really, this is incredible. It's on standby. Are you kidding? Like in case we need it, like it's just, you know, it's just a different sensibility mm -hmm. um, and a different way of, of being able to produce and um, effectively move faster because you have to, you know, but in a different way. I, that part of it, just being able to realize your, sorry, because we're talking about filmmaker stuff, but like being able to realize your vision in a way with all the tools and toys you need <laughs> to get the shot you want is really satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we made a pilot that, you know, is, I made a pilot that's particularly cinematic. So yeah. um, for sitcoms, which are traditionally sort of like in living rooms or in, um, you know, all right. not all, but like, or an yeah. office place, you know, yeah. it's like you can be in a soundstage for those kinds of things yeah. or builds, you right, know. Right, right. Um, and for this, we are, we're all on location and it's all mm -hmm. exterior, so. Speaking of like United Front, after In a World, the, 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 there's a bad analogy, like, like if we're all, if, 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 if the audience is like, we're, we're all stuck somewhere and we're, and we're looking around for which car is going to get us there, you know, and there's certain filmmakers that like, that, that's the, that's the car, like you became one of the cars. <laughs> Like oh she's she's gonna get us there like that that's the like and there's some other things that were like oh I thought that car would get us there but no they <laughs> so <laughs> I actually kind of like this analogy but when I heard Lake Bell was gonna do a sitcom on network TV I was like what <laughs> then I heard oh wait Liz Merriweather's gonna do it. and I was like oh because I love New Girl New right. Girl had something that that Weird. other sitcoms didn't have it was like wow these writers are doing something that is not like other sitcoms like it seems like the writers can breathe yeah. so it must be Liz Merriweather wow okay and I heard okay now this makes sense okay <laughs> okay Lake Bell isn't dumb like not, not just doing a, a network sitcom yeah. so Liz Merriweather is going to protect her that's my image I don't know if that's yeah. real but when you're saying like there's corporate interest here. There's, tell me why you would want to seemingly get some soft Put some shackles on. Shackles on. Yeah, I think it's. I think what's interesting about it is the more of the interest is like, oh, why is it that I make you know I do until I don't you know in a world these are two smaller in, independent films right and especially with I do until I don't it's like I, I became pregnant so I couldn't even. Um, I couldn't um, promote it, so it ended up mm. not very many people saw it, and it was heartbreaking. It was like a, my second baby, you know? Mm. And making things for people, for the way that I make my movies are not, it's not like actually super niche, like it's actually pretty universal and pretty kind-spirited, you know? It's not like I'm trying to make something so esoteric mm. that nobody can grasp it. And so because I have a sensibility that is maybe in broad, in broad terms like a little quirkier or a little, right? Like mm -hmm. somebody might describe it if, if, say you've never seen an indie movie and you see, oh, it's kind of like, you know, it's yeah. a little more, uh, I don't know, it's a little different, which is yeah. like what I found when I started screening my pilot for, yeah. uh, for test audiences. They're like, I like it, but the comedy, the comedy is a little weird. But I like it, you know, and yeah. it's that thing that it's it's a little bit of a different texture, yeah. right? It's just taking like this concept of of kind of a more subtle, more alt comedy approach. Things like Liz Merriweather and I both are aligned and are we're like a, just a little offbeat, you know, 
but super accessible, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt like teaming up with someone who can grasp and to, we can we can get further by saying mm -hmm. like, hey, why is it that America isn't allowed to access something that I think is really cool? Like mm -hmm. a, a sensibility and a tone that even yes. like you and I are gonna think is funny, but that also people who haven't really had access to it I because believe that. yeah, I believe like that. get to yes. it. So it's like giving people the benefit of the doubt that they're gonna enjoy something that is at first might feel like a little out of their comfort zone, but under the umbrella of something that feels really palatable and right. really accessible. Right. So, so so the 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 people giving notes weren't scared of this. I understood who I was working for. I didn't try to like push it so that everything was, mm -hmm. you know, silhouetted and, you know, mm -hmm. all the drop offs, like nobody can see your face. It's like, I understand, you know, especially in our, our tone meetings before going into shooting, you know, I kept saying, look, I, I'm going to want to play things out in the wide. I'm going to be, my lenses are going to be wide and we're going to, you know, we're going to see a lot and then we're sometimes not everybody's, you know, I, I went into it like, I don't want to see every line on camera, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I want, you know, people's face to sometimes drop off or be blown out like in real life. The way that mm. when you're in a farmhouse, you know, there's not light, there, there's not a bunch of lights on all the yeah. time. And sometimes it's just natural light streaming in from a window. And that's incredible. Like they get, you know, they can tend to get nervous to hear that, you know, because <laughs> yeah, they yeah. would like to see it all clean, perfect, and yeah. awesome, you know. And I'm like, it's gonna be a little messy. It's gonna be. Yeah. And, and I kept working with my DP, being like, we gotta mess it up a little bit. We gotta just keep it, you know, mm. keep it going. Blake McClure did the the pilot, and then Jason Oldack did the um the series. And I, I just feel like it was really important to kind of stay strong with most of that, and then mm -hmm. understand that the, I will also be met with some challenges where. Oh, I like Liz Merriweather would tell me like honestly we're gonna need a very clean uh, blow for the scene, for instance, which is like the the button of the scene, right? To get mm -hmm. out, to act in, to act out. You know, it's like there are um, there are it, there's structure obviously mm -hmm. to um, network television that's very different than I'm used to. I'm right. like, oh, like you can't just let a a scene peter out, mm -hmm. you know, awkwardly. You mm -hmm. know, it's like sometimes, but Mostly you kind of need something a little sharp. It's mm -hmm. a little sharper. And and you can totally do that within within the um, the lexicon and the tone of what we do. Right, I was just gonna say, it sounds like you just like, it's like a challenge that you meet. Yeah, I it's, it's not like, like it. it's going against your, <laughs> yeah. your uh, instincts. It's sometimes, look, it's like, yes, of course it's sometimes frustrating. It's like with your parents or something, you know? You're just like, <laughs> yeah. you love them so much and it's really, it's great that they're there because they're really supportive, but yeah. sometimes you're like, stop nagging me, you know, and just <laughs> let me do my thing. Um, so I think, you know, the corporations are kind of like that type of entity, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you do kind of, you have to listen to them, but you they also learn from you too. You said somewhere that you can't write for other people. You direct. Of things that you didn't yeah. write. I just wanted to n hear you talk about that a little bit. I, I have rewritten uh, for other people, uh -huh. but I think if I'm conceiving an idea and giving birth to an, an idea and, and, you know, sort of pouring all of my love and energy into it, it's usually something that I want to direct or be in, you know, is this or because, both. Is that because you... It's like you want to see it through. Like you know how to get the best out of the baby. I do feel that way, yeah. yeah. And also I just feel like because I'm not, I'm a, I'm a slow writer. I'm like a very, like it takes me a long time and I pour over it. Rewriting is a little different. You know, it's like, oh, I kind of see the, you know, I see the things I'd like to do to put my spin on it. Um, certainly for like a punch up or something yeah. like that. But for something like, you know, you know, it's so difficult to write, you know, from nothing, a, a, a screenplay, you know, so when I become that infused with it and I write to direct it, mm -hmm. I, I really think about it as a producer and as a director and how it will look and what mm -hmm. the, you know, what the shots will be and like who's going to be in it and, and, you know, the type of casting. I'm mm -hmm. just very specific. And so I just feel like it all kind of comes together. Like for, I've been nurturing a script for like eight years that it's like, I, that's how long it takes for me to, yeah. that's about normal for me. Um, you know, and it's like, 
I will continue to nurture it and I in a thousand percent uh, will direct it, not hand it off to somebody yeah. else. It's yeah. just too long with this with this person that is a script. But yeah. I am a director. I am a creator of other things. I am an actor, you know, I'm an yes, actress and right. I do th I'm an actress for hire sometimes and I enjoy that because I like being on other people's sets. I like to play out other people's stories. I like to see how other people run their set and how they did that. No, I've never done a stunt like that as a director. Let's see how I do it as an actor mm. and then like learn the tricks and that's how I lear learned to be a mm. filmmaker, you mm -hmm. know? And then on on top of it, I am a mom and I am, yeah. you know, a wife and and I have um, I have two children. Holy yeah. shit. Like yeah. so funny as as a female filmmaker, I do feel like that plays in a lot, you know? It's yeah. like even for male filmmakers but if you are a parent and you also make movies everybody knows movies are like babies you know and so if you have two human babies you know it's harder for you to turn out film babies mm -hmm. you know it's just um and i sort of like am okay with that because i don't think that you know i think that it's a really honorable job to be a, a parent i really do i mean we're just you know like no big deal we're just creating the next generation of humans you know it's like that's a really beautiful thing and, and it also it a thousand percent feeds into your experience as a writer your experience as a director you know it's like yes. your your understanding of the human condition right period right you know so there's like a lot in there it's like therapy it's like right. parenting and therapy both these are life things that actually are great tools as a writer Has your approach to, to comedy in general changed performance-wise? Like, I respond to certain kinds of comedy that's, that's, that's where oh. the joke doesn't land. Mm -hmm. Quite where, where the pad is, where the landing sure. pad is. And I feel like you, like, and, and a number of other people, like, I feel like you guys have this instinct to not land it on the pad Correct. and, yeah. like, slightly off the pad. And that's what I find funny. Right. Like, if it lands right on the pad, I'm like, okay. And I hear other people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get and it. I'm like, okay, that's funny, quotes, but it doesn't. So, so now, by the way, network comedy is landing it more on the pad. Right. But what's cool about our show is we're going to land it on the pa pad, usually for the act out or whatever. Yeah. And... But sometimes we're gonna fuck around. I've already noticed gonna, that. Yeah, in we're gonna in the pilot. We're, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna land off the pad, and yeah. I think that's precisely, uh, hopefully, the difference. You know, where yeah. it's like people are gonna say, "No, that feels a little different." With me. You know, they don't know yeah. what they can't put their finger on it, but yeah. it's like kind of exciting and it's different. It's like a different language, right? You know? And I feel like new, uh, she did this in New, New Girl. Girl. Too. Yes. Yeah, it's like it's what I think some people might just very broadly broad strokes would say it feels weird you know but in yeah. a great way right? right right so it's like oh that was weird that was funny you know yeah. i was like that that's sort of the broad strokes way to discuss it but i think it's actually um i think it's smart you know right. i think it can be really smart now why i think liz is kind of a genius is because she she really like knows um, cause we have, obviously are in, we're editing right now and we're in post-production for the series. Um, and so because we're going to air right away, it's like con you know, constant, which is why I'm so burnt out because I'm doing press, but yeah. also doing post. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, she's so good in that way of trying to mine for, um, ways to keep it sharp. She's always talking about sharpness mm -hmm. and I am tend to be like things a little muddier, mm -hmm. but in order to appeal to an audience that has the ability to f turn off the show or go to a different state station, you know, and yeah. get bored, it's a much more um, low attention span in, right. in a network space. Right. So movies are luxurious, they're languid, you're allowed to take your time, you can be a little messy because they're already on the ride with you. Yeah. But understanding that this medium of network comedy it's just quicker you yeah, know and yeah. it has to you can still choose your moments for where you know yeah um landing so off the pad, interesting. but yeah. it's, it's yeah. interesting it's, it's very like there's parts of it that are mathematical almost right. you know right um when i was watching some interviews of, of you i was noticing like i don't know what, what came first me noticing like your hands 
But then when I saw the show, it's like you act with your hands too. It's like it, it, it was mm -hmm. like you use it for comedy. When it, when you were just in interviews, I was like, wow, if I had this on mute, like it's almost <laughs> like she's like sign language. I could see things and you're like movement. But in the show, you're actually like yeah. very refined and like you use it for comedy. I've never seen really any, I don't know of anybody that does it quite like this where you're like, like yeah, punctuating and this is not gonna really work I know, well on a podcast. On a podcast but, but yeah, I- This I, is conscious. Very conscious. I find it, I find physicality really, really interesting for characters. And yeah. you know, I come from a space of like real kind of, um, Woo woo, deep cuts, uh, drama conservatory in in London. You know, so yeah. I do like to access my whole body in taking on a characterization. And you know, for I do until I don't, for instance, the movie, that, my second film, yeah. I play a version of my mom. But I say a virgin. It's really just her physicality that uh -huh. I wanted to wear for the character uh -huh. Uh -huh. because she is she's all she's um, very lithe and inward, and so she sits on the edge of her chair and then her it's as if her um this is what i did for alice but it's as if her elbows are attached to her side and so she can only have a range of motion that is you know a small radius yeah, you know that, yeah. that goes on. so everything is um uh, sort of particular and 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 i think that i found that interesting in yeah. using physicality to create something and so for Rio, I have embellished my own gesticulation uh, tendencies yeah. um, and allowed her to um, help punctuate yeah, her, her neuroses with her gestures. I'm going to say 10 words as if a, a, a little antenna we had here was p picking up the future and we heard these 10 words, but I want you to just tell me how they make you feel. Okay. <laughs> okay, honestly, the 10 words are season seven of Bless This Mess begins shooting next week. Um, got to redo that patio. <laughs> Finally, so, uh, wow. Let's see. Uh, what does that What does that really like do for you? Like, were you like I would have made, or it's fine. It just means I would have been able to like fund my very esoteric weird movies in between so it would have mean probably with season seven that probably syndication mean, like, syndication probably too yeah and that would mean like i probably had like four super weird movies that i did in between then so i'd be pretty jazzed lake bell yeah thank you thank you back to one is a production of filmmaker magazine which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.